Hey, what is going on guys? Today we're taking a look at the Frame Arms Girl Griffin. So this is a design that came out not all that long ago, but it's a really cool design. I'm not really a big fan of the actual Frame Arms kit that this is based off of, but I think the Frame Arms Girl version does look really, really cool. So you've got the girl there in this sort of sailor motif, and then you've got the big giant mechanical arms there and everything looking just really cool there around. It really looks like a girl in like a robot suit, whereas the other ones are more like Mecha Musume, more of like a mix of like girl robot sort of thing. So we've just got the same kind of typical box art, the Frame Arms Girl logo up there, uh, kind of color, little palette there, and then just the illustration and the name along the side. Very cool. On the ends of the box there, we've just got the name and this close-up of the girl's face. Here we've got a look at what the kit is going to look like itself, all painted up, and then this the version without all the extra mechanical stuff on it with just some base weapons there, some of the weapons that you can use here, I guess, with that, so that looks pretty cool. And then for the gimmick, it has this other different like walker form, which is pretty interesting, so I'm quite interested to check that out, how that's gonna actually look. Uh, in use, and then I guess it has this kind of helmet as well, which um, not really too as much into the look of that, but there we go, we'll see how it looks in the actual kit form, and here is how the kit is going to look, just straight out of the box. So as you can see from the painted version, it definitely looks a little bit more, a lot nicer with those little bits of color painted in, some panel lining done on that, otherwise especially the green bits look like they're going to be a little bit plain looking. but. With a little bit of work, it's going to look much better. So for our face options here on the other side, we've got a happy face, a happy looking off to the side face, and a very happy face. So a little bit boring as far as the expressions for this. It's just kind of a little bit generic. It's so nothing really with a whole lot of character, unfortunately. And then the water slide's also a little bit disappointing. Just the eyes, with the design that's like really mechanical looking like this. I think this would definitely benefit from some like actual like caution markings around on this. It just seems like it would really make sense. So obviously you can get all sorts of caution marking uh, logo decals from uh, HIQ or whatever other decal sets you can find. Generic caution markings are kind of very abundant. Still would have been nice to maybe have some specific ones included other than just the eyes. So that feels a little bit disappointing there for the water side decals. But the price for this is 6,400 yen, just not too bad. As you can see, it's a pretty thick box, pretty good size Frame Arms Girl box here. So that price seems about right on, I would say. All right, so we've got two-tone green. It looks like that darker color also looks like a very dark green, not very like dark navy, as it kind of looks like on the box. But there's not a whole lot of that on the kit. Just that first runner there, I guess. Majority of the rest of the kit is either gray, white, or green. We've got, of course, the purple parts for the hair. So we'll take a look at all the runners momentarily. Let's just get a look at the manual here first. So there's just basically the box art once again on the back. The Frame Arms Grow logo with a nice green gradient there. Going to the first page, we just got a couple of sample photos of the girl minus all the armor and everything. So it's kind of interesting that usually for over this first page, they'll have like a couple pictures of how the Frame Arms Girl is going to look. But it's kind of interesting that they don't have any pictures of her in this front photo page uh, with all the armor on. It's just the kind of the base girl there. And then she's got the knife, the machine gun, and the rocket launcher there for some extra weapons. So a little bit more in terms of weapons for the actual like girl to use without all the armor stuff on there with this one anyway. Uh, and then there is the frame arms design. So again, not really too into that design of the actual robot. It's interesting. It almost looks like something from Border Break, sort of. Uh, but definitely much prefer this version of the kit. So anyway, uh, there is the parts list there, the first part of that, and I have a feeling this is going to continue on to the next page. There we go. There's quite a lot of runners in here, so we've got all of that. And then it's on through the construction. So you build the figure first, just the girl first. So the first couple few pages are just building that. And then you'll go on building all of the armor and stuff and adding that on after that. And then it'll probably go over the gimmicks. Let's see where it transforms. Yeah, this seems to be for the transformation here. It's just showing you how to kind of mix and match the parts around, swapping those, moving some bits here and there and all through that. And then finally you get it into the walker form there. And then here on the last page, you just got the color guide. So there is the guide for all of the colors if you want to stick to the official color scheme for this. And there's a nice uh, big reference photo there front and back for you to see how that's supposed to be look looking when it's all painted up. All right, let's get a look at the runners. All right, so once again, here's a quick look at that water slide decal sheet. The decals, of course, for the eyes look very nice in that purple gradient there for those. But again, just kind of wish that there was a few more 
cool decals on there. We've also got our standard Frame Arms Girl base plate here in a light warm gray color, and this PC runner of polycaps here in skin tone color. And once again, a look here at the faces. So for the open mouth face, it looks like we're gonna have a separate white piece that'll go back in there for the teeth and the mouth. I think that's over here on a, we'll see that in just a moment. And then there's the smiling face looking off to the side and the smiling face looking straight ahead. Then we do have a pre-painted part here, which looks to be the part for the neck. It's like skin tone with some brown painting on there. And this other pre-painted part there looks to be the part for inside the mouth. So you can see it's got there for the teeth, or it's just a white piece, and there's a little bit of pink painted there for the tongue. And then here are our hand options. We got these big Mickey Mouse hands for this one. I'm not really too into that, but that's what we got. We got open expressive hands like that, or just some closed fists, and some just kind of open resting hands. So there you go. All right, then starting off the runners here, runner A is in this light lavender color here for her hair parts. And then runner B is some skin tone parts there, and this kit doesn't really have a whole lot of uh, skin showing on it. It's basically just the top of the thighs there, and then I think there's some around the neck, and that's pretty much it. And then runner C is that runner that I pointed out earlier that it looked like it was slightly dark green, but looking at it again now, it definitely doesn't look like there's any green at all. Maybe very, very slightly, but it definitely just looks like a sort of dull navy blue color. Runner D is some parts here in white, and we've also got some more hand parts on here, so the Holding hands are going to be here as actual parts rather than the separate hands like we usually see with these frame arms kits, so that's kind of unusual. Runner E here in white is basically just a few joint parts. For runner F, we've got a few parts here in this light brown color. Runner H is in this light gray color for some more detail parts. Runner I in clear light green is obviously parts there for the helmet, and then a couple other clear green parts on there as well. Alright, then Runner J is getting into all of our light green parts for this. Fantastic detail around on this. It's definitely going to look good once this is all, you know, painted up, panel lined up. We got some details painted in there, and even doing a little bit of light weathering on this, it's gonna look really, really good. We've got some more of those parts here continued on Runner K. Again, more fantastic details there. And then once again, even more on Runner L here, and then we've got two of this L runner. So there's parts for that. Runner M, a pretty large runner here, filled with a bunch more mechanical parts and things for the robot part of this. More of the same here on runner N as well, a bunch of mechanical parts. We've got two of this N runner. And then runner O is just a couple red parts here, and this is basically for the tip of the uh, bazooka round in the rocket launcher there. So there you go, that's it. So that is it for the unboxing guys and as always a huge thank you to Ace Gundam Store for sponsoring the review. If you guys are interested in this kind of stuff from Kotobukiya or whatever else you guys might be looking for, check the link to Ace Gundam Store down in the video description below. And there's also my coupon code there, Zacharelius10, you can save 10% off everything off of their site with that coupon code, so go ahead and use that. Alright guys, so here's how she's gonna look all built up and uh, in full transparency, I've actually had this built up for like a couple months. I filmed the unboxing and built this cut up kit up a couple months ago and it's just been sitting waiting to be reviewed so I apologize for the long wait until the review but uh, here it finally is all built up and I'm ready to go over this with you guys now the thing about this kit is there's a lot to go over now basically uh, the nice thing about this kit is there's very few accessories left over from what you see here typically with these kits they kind of have a lot of little bits and pieces and accessories and stuff and this kit does have a few but pretty much everything is on there except for like the face and hand options pretty much and that's kind of about it. But so then what you can do with all that armor stuff and weapons and everything attached onto her, there's a lot of different things that you can do with that stuff. So we're gonna go try to go over a bunch of that in this review but I'm sure there's still gonna be things that I'm gonna miss. And that is a really cool thing that I like about this Frame Arms Girl is all the different things that you can do with all the different stuff attached onto her. So that's pretty cool. So the first thing that I'll just mention is that you are gonna want to use the included stand with this or any other different stand, but on its own, it's not really gonna be able to stand up like this just because it's got so much going on there in the back. Obviously, you're gonna have some trouble with that. So you are gonna wanna use a stand to get this to stand up on its own, especially if you just want it standing straight up. But I also wanna say just, I love how this looks just straight out the box. It looks great, obviously with a little bit of detail painting and panel lining, it's gonna look even better, or of course full painting, but even just straight out the box, a little clear green parts on there. Of course the faces always look nice, a little clear green parts up there on the head as well. The painting in some of these details, like the turbine kind of bit here on the side of the big arms there on the backpack, but then you got like, these uh, rocket pods there and these guns up underneath the arms there and you got these arms and these other arms on the back of here are these other like little gripping claws there so we'll talk about all this different stuff there's just a bunch of stuff on this kit and everything moves every which way like these parts will open up these parts will move forward and back this part here up underneath there will move a little bit forward and back there as well 
for the main arms, those will move out and there's just like joints everywhere in here as you can see. And hard points if you wanted to connect other stuff onto this for customizing it, of course. So that'll move, that'll rotate up here, that'll rotate down like below the shoulder joint there, it'll rotate there, the hand will rotate at the base of that, you also got a hinge at the wrist of that, the thumb part here will move up and down. There is actually a little separate joint for that in the thumb there as well, so you can actually sort of grip stuff with this giant hand, which is pretty cool. All the fingers are made up of two separate sections, so you have a joint at the base knuckle, then you have a joint in the middle of the finger here for all these little guys, so you can pose these all really nicely. And then, yep, these guns up underneath there will rotate forward like that. You can, of course, then grip onto those for like an underhanded grip for firing those up underneath there. These missile pods on the back, kind of uh, as they are, it'd be kind of hard to figure out a way to get those to fire from their current position, but you can disattach those and kind of attach them onto the rifles here. We'll see that in a minute. But aside from what is attached onto there, one of the very few other accessories is just this knife here, which you have this attachment piece for. So this is for plugging it onto the back, back in there where the base is plugged into the back of her body. If you wanted to plug this knife into there, then obviously it's going to be filling up that hole, but then using this attachment piece here, this will allow you to then plug the knife onto the back there and then still be able to plug a base connector into there right above where the knife is attached onto her back. But the knife does also fold out here, so you fold out the clear blade, fold the handle back in there like that, and it's just meant to look like a dagger like that. It's very cool. You could get a little creative with it, holding it, I don't know, like something like that, or folding the blade into something like that, looking a little bit more sort of like a tomahawk sort of thing or something. But anyway, it's a cool little accessory. You've got another kind of adapter here, which is for when you've got all this armor kind of transformed into kind of like the walker mode. You'll use this adapter to plug this onto a base for stability. You've of course got the two different other face options and just throughout the review, I'll swap out the different faces so you guys can see what the different face options look like. But I'll admit they're not really the most exciting. They look great as usual, but they're not really the most exciting in terms of diversity. And then we've got the option parts for the helmet if you want to have her wearing the helmet you've got the parts here for that different part for the front of the hair and then this of course clear green part that'll go over the face so again i'll show that here in a little bit and you may have noticed uh, this part here on the front of the chest fell off but it's an opportune time to then go ahead and show you this optional tie piece here which you'll plug into that if you do want to have that part off you can plug this little bit onto there instead which does look pretty nice like that so but so we'll just take a look at a few different poses here before we separate the girl from the armor and then get into more about what you can do with the different things separated like that but man this kit is so cool it's so fun to pose although i admit it takes a little while because there's a lot of stuff going on there so getting into pose you kind of have to work with it a little bit and with the hands the way the hands grip onto there they're a little bit annoying with them being two pieces normally the frame arms girl hands is just like one piece and it's kind of like softer rubber so you just kind of squeeze it into place onto the uh, weapons whatever you want to grip onto this one though the gripping hands because they're two separate parts when you're moving stuff around and so much stuff is moving around the ten the hands kind of tend to pop apart all the time while you're moving things around so you kind of have to do the hands last in your posing i found that's kind of helpful but it's so cool that basically this kit has like so much articulation within like all the armor parts i mean like the main body of the girl is like kind of very typical frame arms girl if you built any frame arms girl kit it's all kind of the same in terms of her articulation there but like all the robotic parts i mean everything that looks like it moves probably moves there's so much different moving parts and everything on this so it's really cool to pose it up and everything so really really happy with just how this looks it's super cool it's definitely climbed to probably one of my favorite frame arms girl kits so far if not my favorite of the ones that i've built anyway and we're really only scratching the surface now at this point like i said there's a lot of other stuff you can do with this so let's check out the other different forms and things that we can do with this and also just for a quick size comparison i want to show this to you in case any of you had the idea of maybe picking this kit up with the intention of kit bashing some of those parts with some gunpla kits here is it compared to a 144 and a 100 scale gunpla kit so you guys can get an idea of the size of these parts they certainly would make some pretty interesting parts to kit bash with some gunpla that's for sure Sure. So in order to take off all this armor stuff, basically this whole section here on the arm, oops, is just connected on via this peg here on the side of her hip. Pop that part back on there. And of course, like we saw before, the front part on the front of the chest is just replaced with this little sailor tie to complete the sailor uniform there. These parts here on the side of the arm, you can remove those. And then here on the leg, it's plugged in up here into the thigh and also into the side of the leg. So you need to just pull it completely off 
there like that and then the other side as well and so here is how she's gonna look then without all the armor on there very cool look to the suit as you can see really cool color separation here as well kind of like the suit sort of reminds me a little bit of the Ludens kit as well kind of has a similar sort of look to that and so it's very cool one thing you can also do here in removing the hat if you want to you have that ball joint piece up there at the top where the hat is plugged into but basically what you can do that center piece you can turn it around upside down and then it won't have that ball joint sticking up it'll just be flat on the top there we go like that so you can see and that's pretty cool as well you can do that and going back to these parts that we took off let's go ahead and take off these weapons parts and show how you can use these with just the girl here by herself. So this will just be that submachine gun that you can just hold regularly. Now you could still hold it under the arm like it was held uh, kind of before, but as you can see, you've got a little hard point here on the side and the opposite on the other side. And this is able to be removed. So you could have this like plugged onto her shoulder or side of the leg or somewhere on there on the back of it. Uh, for just storage there for you've got two of those of course this handle here on the front will move up and down kind of again as we saw it when it was all built up before and then it can also actually swing side to side there as well then if you take this section sort of uh, rocket launcher I guess we can make you slide that part back and removing the clip so you have to choose between which one you're gonna do but you can just stick this on here in place of that like that and then it's sort of just a handheld uh, rocket bazooka sort of thing here as well so very cool different weapons you can choose for that basically you can have two weapons and you can either choose for them to either be uh, like the rocket bazookas like this or like the submachine guns and say for example if you were to kit bash some of the armor parts with another kit so that means taking the parts from this kit and kit bashing them with your gunpla or 30 minutes missions kit or something like this and you were just left with this figure on her own I don't think it would necessarily be a huge loss because just the figure on her own also looks really cool I really like the look of this so it's almost tempting to want to get like two of them one to have like totally armored up and then one to have without all the armor on there and then just with some weapons or something looks pretty cool you've got a couple of weapon options in here included with the box but then of course you have a very large range of other different uh, Kotobukiya modeling support goods weapons or uh, weapons kit bash from other Kotobukiya kits or Gunpla kits or whatever as for the holding hands for this of course the holding hands work well for the weapons included with this but they may not necessarily work with everything, uh, but they do seem to be pretty universally sized, at least for Kotobukiya weapons handles. Uh, but if you were wondering if you could use just regular Frame Arms Girl hands, like the smaller size normal Frame Arms Girl hands on this, uh, you don't have the them included, obviously, and you don't have the wrist parts included for those. So if you were to take the wrist parts and hands, I think, from a different fr Kotobukiya Frame Arms Girl kit, and usually most of them come with extra wrist parts in there as well. So I think that should be able to work on this just fine, the actual plug-in where the wrist plugs into the forearm does seem to be the same size, so it should work fine. And as for the helmet or visor here, instead of actually putting on the face, you can also attach it here onto the back of the head, I guess just for storage, I guess. So if you preferred it like that, you can put it on there. I think it does look a bit odd, but I don't know. It's I could see it maybe being something that some people may be interested in, but let's just put it on the front here like normal. So you swap out the front of the hair for a like, little bit smaller piece there so that it'll fit inside here, then just pop this over the front like that. And there you go. And again, really reminds me of the Frame Arms Girl uh, Ludens kit as well. So it's not technically Frame Arms Girl, but again, this is the kind of thing that I was expecting to be included with the Ludens kit actually that was not included. So it's a kind of interesting thing to see how something like this would have worked if it would have been included with that kit. And finally, just to wrap up the review, guys, here's what it looks like when you transform all the armor into the walker. And it's a pretty interesting. I don't know. It's not really the kind of thing that I really would probably find myself being too into but it's an interesting thing and I can definitely see the potential there where you could customize this further and also just kind of now reminding me where if the kit or the figure sort of reminds me a little bit of Ludens this also sort of reminds me a little bit of the Metal Gear Walker there so I don't know kind of it's kind of an interesting thing but anyway you can see with all the hard points and everything on there you could totally customize this even further adding more weapons or more parts onto this and just like without without even adding something from outside the kit you could make this in a little bit different ways I think by just putting the parts on in a little bit different kind of orientations things like that you could customize this to make it be something pretty cool so really really happy with this kit guys if you couldn't tell I uh, really am satisfied 
with this. I think it's a really awesome kit in the Frame Arms line, Frame Arms Girl line. If you're interested in the Frame Arms Girls kits, but maybe have been wondering about, you know, not really sure about which kit to pick up, this is definitely one that I would recommend. If you're used to building like mecha models, gunplay models, and things like that, but are interested in maybe checking out one of the kits in the line, this is one that is, a, I think, a really good mix of the two. Yeah, it has really cool mecha elements in there as well as the, of course, girl character that you're building in there as well. But so that's going to be it for the review guys. If you do have any other further questions or comments, do feel free to ask down below. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Again, thank you to USA Gundam Store for their support as well guys. Do check out the link to USA Gundam Store. All the different Kotobukiya kits, Frame Arms, Frame Arms Girl stuff there. You can save 10% off everything using my coupon code ZAKORILIUS10. So check that out. I'll see you guys next time. Have a good one. Bye guys.